Every now and then, Wolf and Fritz sniff the scent of a one-of-a-kind antique and chase it to a place that's dark, strange, or even dangerous. Here are some times when American pickers found weirdness along with the treasures. When Captain Kirk from Star Trek makes an order, you take it. He'd contacted the antique archaeology and spoke with Daniel Colby, who passed along the message to Mike Wolf and Frank Fritz that William Shatner wanted, nay, needed, an antique millistone for his garden. Sure enough, because they're the best in the business, the pickers found a millistone, a gigantic tool used to process grain. Hardly a jaded Hollywood big shot, Shatner made the surreal moment even more delicious with some breathless declarations. This is the signature piece. The millstone is genius. In a second season episode, the Pickers went deep into Kentucky to the home of an older couple named Don and Nanette. They had a barn with their tossed all kinds of junk, from branded signs to old TV sets. As Wolf looked around, he noticed a curtain that would otherwise have blended into the wall. Apparently not worried about the deadly spiders or ghosts, he boldly just stuck his head through the opening and came out wearing a very old, oversized, grotesque mask of screen comedian Stan Laurel. But where there's Laurel, there's longtime comedy partner Oliver Hardy. Sure enough, there was another, even creepier mask that Fritz put on his head. The masks were crumbling and probably haunted, but the pair bought them anyway. The Pickers have made multiple visits to the home of Ron, aka the Mole Man, beneath a typical-looking American Pickers rural property. With several outbuildings filled with intriguing prospects, it's Ron's actual home. It's more than 20 feet beneath, in fact. In the 2013 episode, Wolf and Fritz arrive to Ron's home unannounced and attempt to navigate the seemingly endless cavernous maze-like tunnels that Ron's been developing since 1965. The guys squeeze through narrow tunnels, walking on narrow planks past wood, cinder blocks, and junk until they get to a dead end and have to try another route. This place is like Indiana Jones meets Sanford and Son. The narrow path, you know, all of that stuff. I mean, I'm jiving on this. Toward the end, they unwisely hurry through, creeped out as they are, until they reach Ron's door, found beyond a single piece of wood placed over a 20-foot deep pit. On a picking swing through New England in 2018, Wolf and Fritz visited a lushly wooded property in Chesterfield, Massachusetts. The owner took them to a remote corner of his land and showed them a thoroughly rusted vehicle decorated with a long-nosed cartoon character in a striped shirt and the word Aerosmith. Could this derelict van actually have belonged to the band Aerosmith? They were local to Boston. Wolf managed to make contact with an early member of Aerosmith who confirmed that, yes, this was the band's touring van. Upon looking through the van, the pickers found Persian rugs, old Budweiser cans, a Three Dog Night sticker, and two of the filthiest mattresses that ever existed. Homer Tate was an American original, a pioneer in the uniquely American art form of the roadside attraction. He specialized in making hideous macabre artifacts out of paper, mache, mud, and real animal bones. Then he advertised them as real finds, not artistic creations in the 1940s and 50s, getting people to stop and take a gander for a small fee. Tate is probably best known for The Thing, an Arizona roadside oddity purporting to be a mummified mother and child. He eventually opened Tate's curiosity shop to display his wares, and it's full of the kind of stuff the American pickers love to find. Indeed, Wolf and Fritz came face to face with Wolf Boy, a Homer Tate original that looks like a combination of E.T. and a turtle, if either creature had fangs. The story is that it's one of 26 months mummies discovered in a cave in Peru, but it's merely an eerie fake. No matter what a viewer's opinion on taxidermy may be, they'd have to admit that a giant building in rural New England, in which every square inch is occupied by a dead, stuffed animal, is pretty weird. Wolf and Fritz visited that very place in a 2012 American Pickers episode, and grew transfixed with two well-preserved elephant heads, one partially real, the other entirely artificial. Wolf decided he simply had to have the mostly real one, and paid an outstanding $9,500 for it. With so much capital tied up in the elephant head, the pickers needed to unload it quickly as possible, and for as much money as possible. They tasked Danielle back at the shop with finding a buyer. When I sent the boys to pick taxidermy stuff, I thought maybe they'd come back with a deer head, some antlers, a squirrel. No, they come back with an elephant head. Who buys an elephant head? Astonishingly, she located one in Rockstar Jack White, a guy who loves pachyderm so much he named the White Stripes classic 2003 album Elephant. White tried to talk down the price, but the pickers, having sunk such a huge sum of cash into their find, didn't have a lot of wiggle room. Eventually, White proposed a deal. He'd get the elephant's head at their price if he threw in some American pickers' worthy bits of old-school Americana, specifically a black-and-white photo booth and a jukebox. The pickers took the deal, then had to shell out an extra $1,000 to ship the elephant head. Rockford, Illinois is famously the home of the great American rock band Cheap Trick, and Fritz, a big fan, was extremely excited to see Rick's picks. 
a rock and roll museum curated by and featuring the assorted musical memorabilia of Cheap Trick guitarist Rick Nielsen. Known for his boisterous stage personality, Nielsen's huge collection wowed Fritz and Wolf. It included a number of the musicians' famous novelty guitars, including a check patterned instrument and one with five necks. Nielsen invited the pickers to his warehouse to see even more of his stuff, and the guys dropped about $2,500 on some albums, a poster, t-shirts, and traveling cases, but they really wanted to take home one of Nielsen's guitars. They haggled for a while, but Nielsen just wouldn't surrender his piece. He finally let Fritz and Wolf have it for free, on the condition that they keep it on display at Antique Archaeology. They can't sell it. Keep it in Nashville so I can play it on Saturday or Sunday or... When you come when, on, you, you can play it whenever you want! You guys take it down there. Are you oh, serious? Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the bell so you don't miss a single one.